Thanks for joining us here on a Friday. So glad you could be with us here on the Market Day Report. I'm Marlon Bowling with you. And uh, we'll take a look at your grain trade as we come down the home stretch of this trading week. Well, this is one of those weeks where we definitely broke out of the winter doldrums, that's for sure. Lots going on in the markets. So let's take a look at our corn market and see if they're able to hang on to the gains that we had earlier today. Right now in that May contract on the corn, we are still trading a penny higher. It's, it's uh, as I mentioned earlier, not a runaway train, but it is higher anyway. We have the July contract, a penny and a quarter higher. Last trade, now 380 and three quarters right in the middle of our trading range today. And we have the December new crop corn currently trading at 394 and a quarter, which would be just one tick higher now, just barely hanging on. It's off of its earlier high by nearly two cents. If we look at our soybean market, Currently, you have the May contract eight and a half higher at 907. It's been very choppy during the day. Uh, during the early morning hours, we actually broke down below nine dollars, got as low as 898 and a quarter. Now we're at 907, which puts it eight and a half higher. In November, up seven and three quarters at 940 and a half. And then you have the wheat market, and in Chicago, we have the May contract currently trading five higher at 457 and three quarters. Uh, July four and a quarter higher. Kansas City on the May contract, uh, it is also. Also trading higher today. Let's see what it's up to. Uh, Kansas City May now four and a half higher at 441. That's eight cents off our earlier low now. And July four and a half higher at 449 and a half. You should take a screenshot of that sh uh, screen there. Every price is four and a half higher. Exactly the same. You don't see that very often. Okay, on the Minneapolis wheat, you have your May contract two higher at 554 and a half and July up a penny and a half. Let's go to the trading floor in Chicago where the action is taking place, where we have Scott. Scott Geek is standing by. He's with Walsh Trading. All right, Scott. The uh, grain traders definitely seem to be in a different frame of mind this week. Yeah, that's for sure. However, it is very light volume today, so that is a little bit concerning. We're getting a little bit of rallies here and there, uh, but it's very light volume. That is concerning. We got to see where these are, where these levels are going to close. You know, for soybeans, our level we need to close above 900 to have that continue upside. For wheat, we need to close above 460 to have that trend reversal back to the upside. That will be a confirmation that the trend has reversed a little bit to the upside. We're close, just not quite there just yet. Uh, but just everything across the board, everybody's trading off of the headlines. Headline risk is definitely driving the price. Volatility going into this weekend is a little bit elevated, definitely skewed to the call side all the way across the board. So you have the weather factor coming into play. That's definitely playing a bigger part into uh, all the option volatility a little bit more than usual. Uh, certain parts in the country are worried about flooding. Even certain parts in Nebraska, some of the Dakotas, they're worried about dams breaking. If that happens, flooding, uh, that's going to be detrimental to some of their crops. So it's definitely skewed to the upside to the call side. I imagine you probably hear from a lot of producers that say, man, I don't know if we're ever going to get this corn in the ground this year. Yeah, that's for sure. Everybody's worried about it. Uh, anywhere between the trade war talks to now there's weather issues. You know, the corn farmers are having a really hard time this year. You think that's going to impact acreage then? Uh, it should. We'll see whether or not it actually does. But right now, it's definitely playing an impact on the current acreage right now. Okay, Scott, we'll come back, and I can't wait to get your thoughts on this livestock trade and kind of a runaway market in the uh, lean hogs of all things, and we'll talk about that when we come back in just a moment. This portion of the Market Day Report is brought to you by John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. Well, we have been featuring a lot of photos related to that uh, recent storm system that went through the central part of the country. Here's one from Uper Ann. It says near Eben, Michigan, and it's a, a bunch of cattle uh, basically about uh, knee deep in the snow there, uh, wooded background there apparently, but uh, boy, just uh, more evidence of more widespread harsh circumstances for the uh, cattle industry in the central part of the country and of course it is calving season right now and with that in mind i want to go back to the trading floor there in chicago and bring back uh scott geekus now he is with walsh trading and he's been uh, talking with us about the markets what is the talk of the trade there on the trading floor this morning about the situation with cattle and this winter storm and all the extensive flooding going through the country are they fully grasping the overall magnitude of this 
Um, I want to say yes, but I mean, we have yet to see how it's really going to play out. The option volume definitely suggests that it, the prices are definitely building higher. The 130 calls are still building. We have an open interest of a little bit over 7,000 right now. The 130 calls are building positions. There's over a thousand that traded today. Even the 133s are starting to build positions. So with the option volume, the option flow is set, definitely suggesting a little bit higher as well as, you know, the futures pretty much recovered all of two days, big drop. So we expect a little bit higher move in the cattle market in the next few days. And, of course, for those that are just vaguely familiar with options, of course, anytime you're talking about a call, that is an option to buy that uh, kind of gives you that option to buy if the market moves in your direction there. Uh, so when you talk about uh, the 130s, uh, which month are you talking about? I assume the April? The front month, yes. Okay. The April. Okay, let's take a look at our current futures uh, trade then on the cattle market right now. We'll get everybody updated. Currently, you have that April contract that Scott was just talking about at 128.85. So those uh, 130 calls that he was just talking about would be up there a dollar and 15 cents above where we're currently trading. Right now, we're up a dollar 45 from our close yesterday. The June is up a dollar 18 at 121.53. And now, if you look at the feeder cattle trade on the feeders, March now up 58, but all the action seems to be in that April. It's up two and a quarter, 225 right now at 146.90, and that is two dollars and sixty cents off our earlier low today. May up a dollar 85. Then you have the lean hogs, and they uh, came higher pretty much out of the gate this morning, and uh, they just have really not looked back very much. April lean hogs up 225 now at 6805. The May contract up 240 at 7730. The deferred contracts are close to limit up, but not quite white. They're just a few ticks away from that. They've been flirting with it all day. They have hit limit up. There's one now. August uh, just touched limit up three bucks higher. So uh, the lean hog trade definitely has that appearance that uh, it has put the long-term lows behind it in the rearview mirror. What do you think the future holds next week on the hogs? Well, it's all going to depend on if what data comes out, how this weather is really going to play out. But I expect that volatility to continue to the call side, to continue to the upside. We're going to keep an eye on that open interest and watch for those positions to build. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, on the cattle market, and we're showing the uh, lean hog graph right now, what a spike that is coming off those lows. On the... Uh, Live cattle trade, that has come off of contract highs, so kind of the opposite situation, but it has, after a big drop Tuesday, kind of tried to reestablish itself again. What do you think? Yeah, exactly. I mean, with that big spike on Tuesday, we've seen a very, it was a lot of volume, but at the same time, we had almost record longs in the for the funds. So we've seen that big pullback, but the open interest didn't really change that much, which led me to believe that it's just more of profit taking, more of a little bit of positioning of the funds. But right. again, still with the upside calls. Okay, well, thank you uh, for visiting with us, Scott. A lot of ground to cover. You did great. I appreciate it. Scott Geekus of Wall Street. And he's located right there in Chicago, and uh, right. he's very adept at working with the options. That's why we like to talk about them. Absolutely. And I like how you let us know what a put is versus a call. Very we like valuable that. stuff. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Markets Editor Marlon Bowling.